Yeah, one of the things. <clears throat> let me share my experience with you. It okay. kept me, it kept me focused in my early years as a Muslim. You know, <laughs> even to today. You know, when I became Muslim, you know, I, I mentioned I had joined the the, the Dar al Islam movement. It was a jamaat. It, it was a group of brothers. Right. And uh, and that was important. You know, there was a lot of support. You, you joined the community. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't practice Islam or live Islam isolated. You got to be part of the jamaat. Like the prophet said, the hand of Allah with the jamaat. Wherever there's three of you, all right, in a village or an area or on a journey, then support someone to be the Amir. That's what. So, so that was the idea, you know, having leadership amongst yourself, living in a non-Muslim society. So this concept, you know, okay, cool. So when I embraced Islam, there was a group of brothers, you know, living that, living those hadith. They didn't, they didn't have no scholars to tell them, well, look, you know, this is the interpretation, this is the hit on it. We just write right from the hadith, boom. You got to have a leader. You know, if you stop and pray, you got to have an imam. Mm -hmm. And so when we said imam, imam meant more than just a person who you prayer. He was the leader. All right? And so we, you know, so when brothers embraced Islam, then they joined this jihad and whatnot, you see? And there were certain goals and certain objectives, you know, with the Islam. And one of them was to give da'wah, to spread the message of Islam. So we were very active. We didn't embrace Islam, and then we were sitting in the mosque, and we were learning the religion, and we were, we were going forward. We were hitting the street. We were hitting the prisons. You know, we, we were... That's what we did, you see. And one of the things that the Imam established within the Jamaat was a prison committee. And he assigned a brother to be down. We have the prison committee, and they would go in the prisons to get a doubt to the brothers in the prison. And why not, you see? And then we had the Friday night program where we would go out and do fishing. We call it fishing. You know, we go out and just invite people to the next year. We invite them to the next year, Friday night. They would come. We have sometimes we get a gathering like this here. We have one of the brothers give it like a little lecture, a little talk on fundamentals of Islam. And many of the brothers in the movement became Muslims that, that way. See what I'm saying? And then we would then we then we would, then we would get our lessons and we would learn, you know, Fatiha, we would learn you know, the surahs and learn our salah, you know what I'm saying? We would learn basic Arabic and stuff like that. And then and then, you know, and and, and, then, and, then, and then we would go out, you know, we would be sent out, you know, in the field to teach and to and to and to bring others in, you know. You know, get down, you know, tell people, you know, in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and so the movement just grew like that. And then we developed institutions because you know, living in America, you know, uh, the issue became, well, like, uh, what about our children? You know, now we, you know, and back then we, we were real revolutionary, real radical. You know, we didn't, as we embraced this now, you know, we, we wanted to develop some, some way where we can, you know, have an alternative to our children rather than send them to the novel system. You see, so the sisters got together and started teaching the children in the mosque, homeschooling in the mosque, and then before you know it grew, 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 and then they went to the imam and said, look, we need a building. And so the brothers got together, put some money together, <laughs> bought a building, and, and, and you know, that was the madrasa. You know what I'm saying? And we, so we sent our children to the madrasa. And, and the brothers, you know, the brothers would, you know, we trained the brothers, we had some kind of program where we, we were able to train the brothers and sisters in Islam and, and, and the other skill that they needed to be qualified on an academic level to, to teach our children. We went from one institution to another. You know <laughs> we, we were a community. We were a movement. You know, you know, because Islam. And when you look at the prophet's example, you know, when the people embrace Islam, they took shahab. The Muslim wasn't left on his own. There was a support. And that's where the jamaat came in. You see, and the prophet Islam was the leader, and he guided the people, and, and they were trained, and they developed, and they grew, and they grew. You know? So we followed that example. You know, and we developed you know, economics. You know, we were in, in New York, in Brooklyn, we were the first ones, the Dal Islam movement was the first ones to, uh, we said, we were real radical. You know, my big Mac said, wow, you're young, you're not young people at all. You're not, you're not brother Bobby is, man, Bobby. <laughs> oh, that's how we was. You know what I'm saying? We was, uh, when we got our building, our, our mosque, y'all see mosque, the first thing we did was, right in the middle of the hood, we in the Bethesda Stuyvesant. You see, so we put that loud speak on the building. We call it on five times a day. It hit the avenue, and many of the immigrant brothers who came to America at that time, when they walk up, you know, because you know, Notion Avenue was like a main thoroughfare. They couldn't believe it. They hit it on. They said, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> they walk up the block and say, see brothers sitting outside. You know what I'm saying? Is that your dog? I said, "Yeah." Y'all call me five times a day. They let you do that in America? Yeah. We, we 
we gonna do it. <laughs> we gonna do it. <laughs> we gonna do it. Because it's our community. We right. know our people. And, all, and, it just, and, and it was just a matter of relating you know, to the neighbors and the, and the people in the neighborhood. This is our tradition. We must, you guys, ring the bell. The church mm -hmm. ring the bells and the Jews got a horn. We call it on and these are the words and whatnot. And so once you begin to explain that to the people, they have no problem with it. And it's unfortunate that, that today, like we set that precedent way back then and today you got people in this parts of this this parts of America. That people that live in the you know, people who establishing mass church are having problems with their neighbors. Mm -hmm. Calling it on. Mm -hmm. And they won't let them call it on. Mm -hmm. Some of them ain't calling. I said, wow, it was like strange, you see. But again, they started out not without, you know, without having a relationship yeah. with the people. You got to connect with the people, talk to your neighbors, man. Once you, you know, and so this was back then. You know, that's how it was. But particularly, many of the immigrant brothers, or the brothers that came from the Arab world, or came from the, the from the, the Indian subcontinent, all right. You know, they had that problem, but we didn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. We had a problem, you see what I'm saying? Because again, when we embraced Islam, we didn't disconnect with the community. Right. <laughs> our, our mothers and our aunts and our, you know, mm -hmm. our, our siblings, you know, you know, you know, they it's like family. You see, and they knew who we was, who, you know, and what we were about. And so we it's a matter of giving power and explaining things to the people. We developed a relationship with the local precincts and all of that. In fact, we would go and we had a few incidents where somebody was, you know, the police were looking for someone and and they want to arrest somebody, they want to come up in the mosque, and the brother said, nah, you can't come up in here like that. There's, a, there's, a, there's an etiquette, that should be a protocol. Mm -hmm. so, because there, so, so there was an incident that took place in the Nation of Islam mosque in Harvard where somebody got killed. So the police run up there after the brother. So after that, they, you know, the, the, the New York uh, uh, Police Department decided to sit with the Muslims and work with them. Man, they had some kind of mm -hmm. guidelines of how you approach a mosque and whatnot. If you got a warrant, then we'll cooperate. But you can't be run up in the mob because, mm -hmm. you know, again, this is, this is our place of worship. You see what I'm saying? All right. And so, uh, and so we, so we made some guidelines. You see what I'm saying? And uh, we established a relationship with them and whatnot. And uh, Allah was kind of Allah over the years, and they, and they respected us because our presence, you know, the Muslim back then, the presence of the Muslims, you know, you know, uh, wherever we were, we cleaned up the community. Our presence was like no drugs. Mm -hmm. Drug free zone, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, crime, crime free zone, you see, where we set the mosque up, we, mm -hmm. and we moved around it, and we had businesses, and that area neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. so that presence, you know, and so, so the police, you know, they appreciate it, <laughs> so, they, so they work with us, they work with us, how do you know, you see, because they make their job easier, you see what I'm saying, and, uh, but we had a tremendous impact, you know, on the community. You know what I'm saying? We had our own security apparatus, and so that's, that was my experience of community in Jamal. You know, institution building. So we 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 established the first halal meat store. <laughs> that's that's yeah, we buy the kosher meat. You know, we became Muslim. We don't be halal meat stores in New York. You see, and so my brothers got together. We made our own meat store. We do our own zabiha, mm -hmm. and so you know, we made it happen. One forty three. You know. Uh, 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 Court Street, you know, we established the halal meat, but we found that people could go and, and shop and buy halal meat, you know, and, and we had, you know, different other economic projects, you know, to, to sustain the work that we were doing and whatnot. You see what I'm saying? And uh, we had branches all over the country, you know what I'm saying? And the whole concept was building a community, building a community. I mean, when we embrace this now, we need to be a part of the community, our families together, the sisters, there's a sisterhood, and the kids, and they, do things and have a brotherhood and we did things and that young people, you know how we are, man, we like to get physical. Mm -hmm. So we trained, you know, we were soldiers. We trained, you know, whatever you build, you gotta protect. We were living in America, living in the hood. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And the gang exactly. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we so we so we trained, we worked out, you know. We did those kinds of things. That's what young men do. We don't have it today. People don't have a clue. You know, we forget that the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged the brothers to learn archery and swimming and wrestling, to, to, be, to be physically in shape, you know what I'm saying, and we, to be prepared. You know, we read all those hadiths and we, and we, and we accepted them, them literally and we put those things in practice amongst our community to protect our community, you see what I'm saying? So we had the security. The masjids, every masjid that was connected with the Dalai Lama movement, subhanAllah, was open 24-7. There was no such thing you closed the mosque. You know, it was unthinkable you closed the masjid. 
So that's what, so we sat there pretty good, you know, we didn't really time now. The moms are closed. So no wonder people come and vandalize the moms, rush all kinds of stuff on the mom. But brothers were security. You know what I'm saying? 24, uh, 24 hours a day. We had three shifts. Eight to four, four to twelve, twelve to eight. Entire military, how <laughs> we function, you know, and we had, we were motivated. Yeah, we were motivated. You know, we keep the mosque open. You see, people travel from one end of the country to another. You know, they get stranded. You know, mm -hmm. brothers traveling. You know, they get, they break down in the highway and they call Yasin Ma. Yasin Ma was calling. Sound like a brother. Well, it's not. Uh, this is brother so and so. I'm coming from California. I'm coming from Michigan, and so and so, brother. I'm trying to find a direction how to get to the masjid. And, you know, if I'm broke, on, you know, you know, my car broke down, and it's part of that. Give me your location, brother. We're dispatching brothers out there to give you some assistance, man. If a sister got stranded or she was harassed on the bus or the job or something, man, you dispatch two or three brothers over there just to give us some some support, man. Mm -hmm. Back up. Right. That's, that's how we roll, then. We were young. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's good training. Yeah, man, that's good, good training. training. We protect, we protect the community. You better tell your call us and say somebody on the job is messing with her. Man, brother rolling, kicking in doors. And at one point, the sisters were afraid to call the brothers. Because <laughs> we do work. And we believed in protecting our women. When we had affairs and we had events and whatnot, then we'd always, the single sisters, they always had an escort. We just got a couple of brothers to go that way. take a sister home, well, yeah, inshallah, yeah. make sure she get in safe. You see? So we were very yeah, protective but, like that. But and that's what community does, man. The sisters appreciate it. Now, the sisters, uh, uh, man, we, you know, it, we're so weak now, as, as an Uma, you know, because again, you know, that we don't think these things are important. We don't think these things are important. But everybody, but every group in America, you know, you know, they, they, they organize themselves in a way that they, you know, they okay. put these kind of, you know, uh, protections around themselves, man. You know, you just can't depend on, on 911 for everything you need. Know, you call them, but in the meantime, you can hold your own. All right? And so that's how it was, you know. So that was part of our training up, and, you know, in the movement, you know. It's nice, man. We, you know, you know, we, you know, we was committed to, we were committed to the dean, you know, and committed to the Tao. You are respecting his mom. So that's, that was my upbringing, and I, and I still think like that. I'm 60, 63, and, uh, you know, and I'm still committed to that. You see, so we could, so we, so I still follow that kind of like that tradition in America. You know, I'm the Amir of the Akam of the Dean Jama. You know, that same spirit that we had in the Dal. Mm -hmm. You know, when we had brothers all over the country, man, that's connected with me. Besides me being the Imam of the Masjid, I'm, that's a long life, a long life. He said, that's all I know. He says, be connected, to be connected with the community. You know what I'm saying? With that vision that the Prophet Islam gave us. And that, is, that, 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 and that and the vision that the Prophet gave us, and that I mentioned today in the Qutbah, Muslims have forgotten. He said that our mission in life is to establish Allah Deen to the best of our ability. You know what I'm saying? To empower Islam. The Prophet Islam said that Islam will yaqlu wa la Islam is over, not under. So we want to lead mankind. You know, we got the guidance, we have the hop, we have the truth. You see what I'm saying? And, we, and it, it, it doesn't mean you bully people and you abuse people and you oppress people and you terrorize people. No. It's about setting an example. You know, setting up the model. You know, following the methodology of the Prophet or something. The problem is very peaceful, very kind, very merciful. So this is what I teach the brother. That's how we got to go at it. You know, we, we're, not, we, we're not terrorists, we're not hoodlums, we're not lawbreakers, and you know, we, we obey the law that we're going to establish a day. Because while America gives us the freedom to practice our religion, you see what I'm saying? So this is part of our relation. <laughs> we want to set this up, we want to set that up. You see what I'm saying? We ain't trying to undermine, we ain't, ain't anti-American, we just pro-Islam. <laughs> you know, George Bush made a statement, you, you, you with us, you with the terrorists after 9-11. He said, no, nah, we, 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 we with the law and his messenger. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't with Al-Qaeda, we ain't, nah, we with the law and his messenger. That's not, that's not our message. Start the movement. You know? We pro-Islam. We ain't talking about mm -hmm. it. We're trying to place a religion. But that's our duty. You see? And so giving down to everybody, every opportunity we get to spread this to people in high places and in regular places, that's our job. You know what I'm saying? Like I mentioned in the cook part today, you know, about the, what, about the man, you know, when he met with George Bush. That's what we're supposed to do. We both are like, we both are shit. Islam. You know, people like that, like the prophet, shared Islam with the, with the, 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 the rulers of his time. I mean, opportunity, he sent delegations, he sent letters to them. Inviting them, them to Islam. And he didn't threaten them. He just told them, if you don't accept Islam, then you're going to bear the sins of your people. He didn't sell them no wolf ticket. He didn't threaten them. You see what I'm saying? 
You don't need to weave them, but that's not the method of the prophets. I mean, they're kind, you be nice and whatnot. And the prophets are sort of set that example, so you see. So we believe, you know, you know, in the Jamaat, you know, that uh, our, our mission is to, is to, is to worship Allah. You know, that's all, that's all individual responsibility. You know, it's a collective ummah or jamaah, wherever we are. You know what I'm saying? Establish your song. You know what I'm saying? And you start from where you're at and you do what you're able to do. Fatakullah master tato. Fear Allah as much as you can. Do what you can do. You see? And so there's something we can do. We don't have to be afraid to do it. Let's go to people that people appreciate. You see? One of the things that we do in, in, in America, you know, we established the trend in America, and this is a carryover from the doll. You know, most of you know, the indigenous imams, you know, indigenous imams is imam. Is imam, he's amir. But many other messages, they don't operate like that. The imam is under some board. You know what I'm saying? Who may not even be religious at all. You know what I'm saying? And they control him. You see what I'm saying? A lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them are very frustrated. They're very, very learned brothers from Pakistan and, and Egypt and other places, but they, they have like, you know, it's important. But we established our Jamaat, you know, I'm just, I don't know, man, the Imam is Yamir. The buck stopped with him. He the CEO. <laughs> he got his board under him, he, you know, he picks his board. You know what I'm saying? And he has mature with the people, he has mature with his board, you see, but they don't, because they don't like a cook, but they've got to fire him and get somebody else. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? No, man, you ain't like that. You see, so we established that precedent. Imam Sabad, Bahad, myself, and all the indigenous brothers, man. That's how we operate our masjids and whatnot. So when people look at us, how we I say, how do y'all do that? That's fun about because we don't, you know, we we didn't come from the Muslim world. A lot of the Muslim world can come out of colonialism, man. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you know, their their vision and their way of operating is different from ours. You see? And, and being a the people that live in America, knowing the people in America, knowing the culture, and you know, and we're part of it, you see. And so we just practice this one. One of the, one of the unique things that we did back in the days, I remember, you see, you know, American people, American people are good people, man. You know what I'm saying? American people, I don't know about me, they, they, they're phenomenal. Man. I, I gotta give it to our people. White, black, and just, there's a lot of good, decent people in America, you know. And uh, I remember when we used to go to, when we first brought the dollar to the prisons, right? And so we had to meet with the warden and the officials to explain how we do things, okay? And so we said, well, the brothers got to have Juma, okay? And uh, so we said, well, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and they got to have their own imam from amongst them. <laughs> so that was like, huh? You know, because all they can think of the religious leader being the priest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, the reverend or the rabbi, and, and that's somebody that they hired to do that. But at that point, all this is new for us, so we wasn't hired. We was coming in as volunteers, trying to sh sh teach them, you know, what the Muslims are doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so, but they said, hey. they said, well, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> that brother had to have, to have a kufi, you know, as, as Islamic identity. But back then, back then, we thought it was the Sunnah. We, we thought it was obligatory. All right? Mm -hmm. But it had an impact. Because again, it helped the brothers come away from the ignorance that they were part of with the gangs and the street and they identified as non Muslim and they allowed us to wear these jalabiyas and kamisas, you see what I'm saying? So the, so the inmates were able to wear this, just like we dress, you know what I'm saying? You know, with the turbans and, you know, it, it had such an impact on the population in the prison that the Rastafarian and all the different other groups inside the prison, man, they start growing their beards. <laughs> you know, you the prison, you have to shave, it's like an army. Mm -hmm. You have to shave. You see, but we told the brothers how to wear their beards. The soldiers, this is our way of life. And so they had to let the Muslims. So other groups saw what we were doing, and so, so, so they were following our lead. And we, you know, so we, we, and they wanted to wear their cultural dress, and they wanted to wear their, you know, their dreadlocks and <laughs> beard, you see. But, you know, make a long story short, the whole idea that we were able to uh, establish certain things, especially, especially in New York State, prison system, mm -hmm. one of the most uh, developed in the country. Okay, and I was a part of that, you know, for a while. All right, and uh, and you know the things that the brothers, the inmates can do inside a prison, you know, in America, you know, people are like what? You see, like like you know, like Ramadan, and they can do itikaf in Ramadan. You know, most of the facilities in America have their own masjids. You know, they give them an area and they build it up and make it the masjid for the Muslims. All the prison, because that's the work we did. So it's something well established in the prison system, you know. 
in America, you know, using the, using the model that we established in, in New York, you see. And, uh, and so for a while, you know, the inmates were the imams of the brothers, but that didn't work. You know, it didn't go so far because a lot of the inmates wasn't, wasn't sincere. Not, they, had a, they had a lot of issues, man. Some of them, the crime they had just wasn't suitable. Mm -hmm. And we solved it ourselves, man. You know, the guys are big this guy. <laughs> so we had to change that. What happened was the New York State, you know, appealed to us, you know, and asked us, can we, can we hire some of y'all to be chaplains and whatnot? They became very distrustful of the inmate. Because I mean, guy was crooks, man. Mm -hmm. Crooks, criminals. Conflict. They don't, yeah, 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 they'll, they'll, be, they'll become Muslim and hide behind this law. Salaam. Yeah, that's it. So that's when we begin to take on the jobs. Hello, brother. How are you doing? That's China. Bye. 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 How are you doing? Bye. Bye. You get it. It's not well established, though, in New York State and throughout the country. And all of that work, all that work came came about through the, you know, the Dalai Lama movement. No. I just felt your whole struggle. Yeah, I just felt the whole of it. You established know? all those kinds of things, you know. And, not, 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 and our thinking, well, here's our, here's our thinking. Everything we established inside the prisons, our thinking was, want for your brother what you want for yourself. What would I want if, if I, law forbid, I get arrested and they throw me in prison? What I want? I want to be able to practice my religion. I want to be able to fast, I want to do intercom, I want to be able to, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we operate, all right? You know, the brothers got to have their kufis. Brothers got to have their beards. Brothers got to have their jolly beard. Brothers got to have their miswife. Everything. I mean, for the, brothers got to have halal out me. <laughs> so they had to go argue for them. Put all those things in place. The brothers got to have their eids. You know, the jumas and their eids and the eid feasts and stuff. All right? And they, they gave the brothers all these things. You see what I'm saying? And so now, I'm like, you know, Islam is very popular in the prisons now. You see what I'm saying? So much so, like a lot of people want jobs in the prisons mm -hmm. and whatnot. Because they pay good. You know, they good. It's a state job. You know, you take care. You work for the state. State take care of you. You stay employed. You see? Yeah, you see? So they make it like starting like, you know, maybe 70,000 American dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a, 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 a year. It's just 75. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Starting now. That's that's the pay for a chaplain. For some chaplains. So they can pay good money. And they have all the benefits and stuff. Those are things we developed over the years and whatnot with our initial efforts of establishing Islam in the prisons and so forth. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, it, but it, we, we started out as Jamaat, though. The Imam said, look, go to the prison. We establish a committee. You know, I don't mean you take care of this and you, Brother so and so you do this. And that's what we did. We just went to the facility and just talked to the brothers and we did what we did. You know? you know, so it was a phenomenal experience. And I'm still feeling it. I'm still trying to do it. Trying to raise up the young brothers and understand what we got to do today. You know, it's the bottom line. Some of the things I've been saying since I've been here, you know. Working to establish a law's dean, man, you know. You know we, we capturing the vision of the early Muslims, man. So part, they knew that they were on the truth. You see? You know, they believed in the promise of Allah. <coughs> Look at the condition of the Muslim world today. You see? Yeah. This ain't right. Not right, right. This ain't right. How am I going to be comfortable? How am I going to be continuing comfortable? Mm -hmm. So what should I do? Uh, you ain't got to throw no bricks. <laughs> you ain't got to hurt nobody. But you can certainly organize yourself in a way to, to, to build yourself up as a nation, as a woman, man. To set an example, people say, wow, I like what they're doing. I like what they see. You know what I'm saying? Even the Muslim world, you say, well, look, any Islamic country. It's not a country we're proud of. What is not a country today that we're proud of and say, this is, this is what we want the world to, you know, follow. <laughs> How about we can say we look at the prophet's model. Mm -hmm. And we can look at the model Kuli for Rashidin. You say, that's what we're proud of. You know what I'm saying? We can't say we're proud of the Umayyads. We can't say we're proud of the Abbasids. You know what I'm saying? Or the Ottomans. They have some good people in there, but that's not the model. You know, we can't say the models in Saudi Arabia. No, they do some good things. Oh, what is the model for the world? You know what I'm saying? The problem hops or something, call it for Russia. So we, you know, so, we, so we're away from that. We have lost that spirit, you see what I'm saying, you know, of establishing a Muslim of a deen, you know, in, in, the, in the context where people can look at it and say, wow, <laughs> where's our Islamic government? I mean, when Obama was running for office, <laughs> black president, black president. Yeah, I right. able, put together a, a treatise on, on, on my study with one of the sheikhs there, and we went to a few little books together, <clears> and, uh, and, we, and, we, and we studied the issue of... Uh, Islamic, the Islamic political process. How to select the caliph. How to select me. Yeah, that's what we studied. Because the Imam realized that's where my head was at. 
<laughs> I haven't read all the Akita books, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Qayyim, Ibn Qudama, Abdullah. I got all of that. How many nine? Yeah, but the Sheikh said, no, nah, I know what you want. I said, yeah. I said, no, no. <laughs> Who's with the dean? In the world. Hello. In the world. You see what I'm saying? And so, we, so, so this treatise that we put together, you know, I, we had to translate it. And, we, and, and, and so I shared it. And I put it together right after, you know, during, during the campaign of Obama. Because people were talking about voting and voting and voting and we need a you know, political process. But they never talking about this not the political process. You know what I'm saying? It's a topic people don't want to touch. I want to touch. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's in the Habib it's in the Sunnah, it's in the, it's there. You know what I'm saying? The people know what it is. You see what I'm saying? So again, you know, we have a model. You know, the prophet is the model. For everything we do, for everything, we just have to believe in it, man. You see what we're That's how we was in the doll. And, that's, and that's, why, that's why I still think that way. You know, like they say, you say, honey, oh, you from the old school. I say, yeah, but this is this is what we're supposed to be doing. You say, even, even even in the Muslim world, you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that's lacking, man. Yeah, I do, man. You know that, you know. And so, you know, so the companions of the prophet, peace be upon them, they they had ambition, they had vision. You know, they they're very proactive. They started mm -hmm. spreading Islam. They're very organized in general. Said you over uh, yeah, so, we to, so we have to be part of so so I encourage brothers and the brothers here, you know, to, to be more organized. To be more organized. You know what I'm saying? Be more organized, you know, amongst yourself. Have an army, have a set program that you're doing. You know, so saying, you know, uh, to develop Islam amongst yourself and your families that's here and whatnot. You know, don't let it just be like a thing where we just <laughs> whatnot. Because you know, eventually, you know, if you're gonna come back to America, or if you come back to America, you know what you're gonna do. The American not a Muslim society. So you have a lot of you know, advantages because there's mosques all over the place, so you don't have to worry about building mosques. You can just meet in the mosque and meet and have your little uh, nominees like this here and have your lessons and hunger and keep your focus and keep your, that, 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 that strong support for everybody, the families and whatnot. But again, you go back to America. <laughs> what are we going to do? You know, are we going to have a command? Are we just going to just be Muslims, you know? We just go to the mosque, and they eat, go to work, take our families, and that's it. We look at all the problems in the community. We ain't, we ain't building no schools. Mm. We ain't building no institutions. We ain't building our kids. So, so many people realize that so many people are building schools. You know, many of the Muslims, they have the schools attached to their masjids and stuff. Because we need that. We need more. We don't have enough. We don't have enough. Because the majority of the children in America, they go to the Muslim schools, and they, get, they ain't good. Mm -hmm. Nobody say they ain't good. They ain't good, they're corrupt, and they're violent, and they ain't safe, and now you got to, you know, you got to, you, you got to send your baby to the, to the school, and, and the principal is gay, and everybody's gay, and it's okay now, and everybody getting married, and all this stuff, and, and your children sitting in the class, and his, his little classmate got two, got, got two mommies and two daddies, and one, yeah. you see what I'm saying? So this is what they're, you know, and, and, and the books that they're making now to make, to make this mm -hmm. normal, you know, so your children are going to go to accept Learning, this. Learning, yeah, homosexuality on a better young age. Yeah, you know, smile, so it's, 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 it's rough. <laughs> we live in the, in the time of look, you know, so they mm -hmm. smile, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So we have to stand up for the dean, you see what I'm saying? And not just say we disrespect anyone, you know, not, we, not, we, uh, we don't say people ain't got rights, they got rights, you know, they, but still in all, we have to enjoy good is a bit wrong, mm -hmm. and our position to be very, very clear, you see what I'm saying? So there's a lot still to be done, you know, in terms of institution building. A lot of the organizations in America now are doing some phenomenal work, you see, uh, building different things and institutions, alternatives, uh, financial or institutions to, 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 to facilitate brothers and sisters buying homes without the river and stuff like that. These are great things, man. These things have come to us by the grace of a long, long time. But you need to be more organized and do it down. We're just not doing enough, and we can never do enough in down. And again, we go back to the sunnah of the prophets of Salaam. When did the prophet ever stop giving that? When? Never. <laughs> that was an ongoing practice of his, where he always was giving down. Even in times of danger, he was giving down. Man. He didn't stop. He see? And so, and he never, you know, you know, again, he was always consistent. Because that was his mission. Always. Oh, spread his, spread his knowledge. And he share with the brothers the vision where his knowledge went to go. How they supposed to lead mankind? People be following mankind. You see what I'm saying? Because the dean of me, ah, Allah give me the dean. Kun tum kair ummatin bukri zadi nas tak maru nabi maru fi watan hauna anil munkar watubi nabi maru. 
that you are the best nation for mankind. You're the best model raised up for mankind. Why? Because you enjoy good, you forbid wrong. You see, all of the social ills that's, that's, that's bringing down, you know, the society all over the world. You know what I'm saying? It's all the things. The drugs, the gambling, the alcohol, you know what I'm saying, the sex. You know, all these, all these, and all these are big industries, by the way. Mm -hmm. Big industries, man. You see what I'm saying? All right? And it's just, I mean, just taking humanity down, man, you see? But our job, man, is to speak out against those things, man. And let people know, oh, the reason society's going down because y'all are disobeying a law. You wonder why, you know, half of the, what, half of the babies born in America, man, is 40%. You know what I'm saying? It's illegitimate, boy, I wear not. Oh, man, what's I don't know, you see what I'm saying? 95% of the people in America are promiscuous, meaning multiple partners. All the gators. You see, these are ills that Allah forbids. You see, where the Muslims? Join good for being wrong. Let people know there's another there's, there, there, there's another way. So that's all the part of what we have to do. You see what I'm saying? Allah wants Allah will hold us accountable. You see, so the battle with all these people continue in their corruption. And our job, I mean, joining good for being wrong, is spreading Islam. It ain't gonna stop. See? And that's the movement. See, you keep on moving, keep on calling, keep on inviting, keep on explaining, keep on having dialogue, you know what I'm saying? With people, the shares now. You see, a lot of times people, even in giving dialogue, you know, people, how we give dialogue sometimes, some people are very hard and firm, but they ain't the way to profit. You know, how you know people listen to you and you're treating them, you know, mm -hmm. harshly, man, you know, lost kind, you know, you know, lost kind. <clears throat> And he gets the kindness, but he does not get the harshness, right? You see? So you gotta be gentle with people. That's not the problem with Hassan Brother. He was very successful. We follow that that model. We be more successful than that. The problem you call didn't, didn't he wasn't he wasn't negative with people. He respected people. The problem never are he's got he's got Yeah, too. We are he's got it like always, but if we convert, I was a cop. <laughs> imagine a brother that gave me down, you know what I'm saying? Cop. But he's warm. He's warm. Oh my God, he talked to me. You see, so that's how we have to be with the people, man. Nice. Gentle. You see? So much so when they see you, they say, wow, you know, let me, let me, brother, I got, I got a problem. They, 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 they'll, they'll come to you. But <laughs> they see the good in you, they see that you're different, and they'll, they'll seek your advice on many different things, you see. And so this is, we, we got to learn to respect people. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, I've learned, when I was young, I was a little more radical. Like, you know what I'm saying? With time, you start to say, wait a minute, that ain't the way of the prophets or something. Right. Like, the mercy of the mankind. So he was always nice to people, you see. And so alhamdulillah, we have to learn to respect people. So, uh, we respect the normals. <laughs> respect them. They're human beings. You know, it's a hadith, there's a hadith with a, you know, it's a synthetic hadith with a prophet. He'd be a part of saying that part of, he said, you know, part of, part of ibadah, part of ibadah, is to think good of people. Why should we think mm -hmm. good of people? When the Prophet said that everybody's born on victory. The natural goodness that Allah created in them. So they were father, not Muslim. You know, even though people who hate Islam the most. They go down the Prophet I do Jaha, right? Um, even at the time, right? What did the prophet do? He said, oh Allah, bring either one of them into Islam. Strength, in, fact, in fact, strengthen them, strengthen Islam with one of the two that you love most. And Allah said, who? Oh, Umar. <laughs> Enemy of Islam, right? Enemy of Islam. He was on the way to kill the prophets or something, you see? But the prophet prayed for him. The prophet prayed for the disbelievers. See, we act like it's not part of the dial. Pray for George Bush. Pray for Obama. I said, brother, all the time, yeah, pray for him, man. You never know. You never know. So we have to be a little more gentle in our dialogue. You know, make, make people, you know, you know, how many of feel comfortable around us? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the climate we live in today, where they're always suspicious of Muslims, mm -hmm. Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are violent. You know what I'm saying? And so we need to change that image, man. We need to take it back to, to the Prophet. You know what I mean? The Prophet was the most honest person. The most honest person. So much so that his enemies persecuted him for 13 years, but on the eve of his making Hijra, he left Ali right? in the bed, right, to be a decoy and to give back all of the, 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 the wealth that the people had deposited with him. Imagine, imagine. So they still believe that, he, that in his honesty, you see? And so that's why they did that. Can you imagine? Who does that? Who does that? You're fighting somebody, but yet you still, 
you know, you know, when it comes to money and valuable things, you would trust that to the person that's your enemy. That's what they do with the problem. You see, they, because they knew that he would not take their money. You know what I'm saying? All right. And so that's the image we have to have. We have to recapture these kinds of values and these kinds of principles. You see, so when people see the Muslims, they trust the Muslims. And, <laughs> and so when people start saying bad things, especially the media about Islam and the Muslims and so forth, mm -hmm. so, nah, that ain't how the Muslims are. You got, you got extremists in every group. Mm -hmm. So the extremists are doing what they're doing, but the Muslim overall, man, they some good people. You know, they look out, they help poor, they help the needy. You want not to say good example in the neighborhood. That's how we want them to continue to talk about it. But that's how it was back in the days. You see what I'm saying? Before all this crazy violence and, you know, long arm stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Since 9 11, this has been going like crazy. You see what I'm saying? So you're trying to defend Islam and explain Islam. I want to hear that, you see. But they need to see. But again, we can set that good example. Those of us from the West and, and, and also lands and whatnot. You know, how many of people get a better um, um, image? Good image of Islam and I think it's important. And I now challenge. So, we, we so thank Sheikh that Alhamdulillah he gave us uh, such a valuable advice. <laughs> and uh, inshallah, we're going to just open the question of the session, and I'm the first one who will ask the Sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, this is uh, something. Uh, Mashallah, as you mentioned that, you know, we have to be organized and we have to make Amir, you know, among ourselves, even though we don't have any organization or center. So, so let's say now, Alhamdulillah, we are like brothers and uh, Mashallah, some of them, you know, they are involved in da'wah. Some of them they are involved like Brother Ahmed and uh, Brother, you know, other brothers, they are involved in the street da'wah. They yeah. go every, you know, weekend on Fridays, they put the table, they go. So, what's your advice that, you know, also we need to make like an Amir of, of uh, our group? Sure. You know, and, and how, how the the process can go like that. Well, you, you, you would have to, you have to decide amongst yourself how you want to do that. It should be organized, all right? And uh, you, you, know, you know your situation here, uh, how things are, you know? Uh, but every organization got to have a head. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? So if you're organized effort doing Dow and whatnot, and uh, then you should have an idea. Mean, so you decide how you want to do that. You want to set that up, you know. We all we know the power people people and say three of you is on the journey, we want you to be down here. So it's all the brothers, you know, from the West, right from the West for the most part. And uh, you know, and so you functioning in the society where of course there's a structure that's government and all that, but you know, you don't want to make it seem if you you know, you you're you're not organized for the sake of, you know, uh, 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 something to undermine any, any, anything in, in you know, in the country. You know, you're just trying to organize your dollar. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Organize the dollar. For those purposes, like all these different archives and all these different charities and what they have, organization and structure. And so you organize your, 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 your job efforts. That's so in this so case, we have to appoint one person as an Amir yeah. and then yeah. after, after consulting all the brothers, yeah. Yeah. we can just you know, give, give the idea to the Amir so he can just yeah. discuss. Yeah, have my sure. Have my sure. Yeah, yeah. Have my sure. Look, I'm, I'm thinking about what y'all thinking. You can input from everybody. everybody. Throw their hand in, you know, like, we need to do this, they can do this. Just, that's, what the, that's how the prophet did it. What? Now, he, he got the best opinion from the brothers and about anything that they wanted to do collectively. You know what I'm saying? In terms of improving the Dow efforts here. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? or to even get funded <laughs> you know, for some of the Dow efforts and from, from the people or for some, from some of these charities. I, mean, I don't know how we're working, you know, like coming from America, you know, we have our non profit organizations. I'm here, you know. Uh, you know, submitting my documents to the to the charities here. You know, look, you know, we're trying to build a masjid. Like, can y'all help me? <laughs> so we're trying to improve the dollar here. You know, so our little organization. You know, you know and uh, we need some help because we want to do this kind of program. We want to do this kind of program. We want to do some dollar. You know, consult with all the the scholars. You know, you know, that's be part of the process too to give some ideas how to improve your dollar, man. But it's definitely about dollar, man. So, uh, you know, the more organized you are, the better. Yes, okay. Sheikh, uh, sometimes, like when I said in the beginning, some of the brothers who refer to Islam, when they are like all of us, when you're like involved in something deeply, for example, music or uh, like a, a relationship with a woman or mm -hmm. something, it's difficult for them to leave this all at once. And because you're like not thinking like them, you feel that you want to talk with them, but in a quite a gentle way, so they don't. You don't scare them away. 
And sometimes you see that they're not believing whatever they're doing and they're not really responding very quickly to the obligation they have at the moment on their shoulders, like concerning the Salah, and they might like miss the Salah. They're not really into uh, learning how to recite the Fatiha. So uh, you try to talk to them, but at the same point, you, you try to be like careful how you talk to them so you don't really scare them away. So what's your advice? Well, you know, um, you know that's, that, that's a challenge. For, for, that's a challenge mm -hmm. in, in the society, in the world that we live in, whether it's in America, you know, or whether it's in, in a Muslim country where you have all the different, you know, uh, distractions and temptations even in a Muslim country brother in basis of Islam, but he's still hanging on to some of the stuff uh, before Islam. You see, it, it happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Aisha said, had the Prophet Sallallahu you know, told the people uh, or implemented certain laws in terms of the early phase of Islam, no one would follow him. You can't drink, you can't just, you can't do this. <laughs> so when a new Muslim come into Islam, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta make some kind of judgments to help him so he can, you know, uh, be able to let those things. Remember, the companions, you know, it was the Iman. It was the Iman. You know, they, 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 they built in themselves that made them need those things. You see what I'm saying? So the brother embraced this long because he felt good. He was excited. He was a group of people. They talked about Islam. He felt it. He embraced it. He wasn't even thinking about it. I can't drink no more. I can't. Well, most, most people didn't know, okay? But relationships with women and things of that nature, you know, if they got a long relationship, or if they have a child, encourage the brother to get married. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know if y'all got that here, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, Allah, you got to bring the brothers along. So you know, keep, keep, you know, don't stop giving them guidance. Don't stop giving them advice. And when you see a problem, pull his coat in a nice way. Continue to do it and whatnot. Make do a form to show. Always let him know, you know, brother. You know, had a young brother in the community <clears throat> not too long ago. You know, uh, in, in, in Long Island, and nice, 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 nice kid, you know, and he had a baby out of wedlock, you know, he had a baby out of wedlock, and he came to me, I said, subhanAllah, man, I said, I said, well, look, I said, what you need to do, you know what I'm saying, is get the lady, get the, get, get the girl down, man, bring her to me, get her down, man, I said, I'm going to be Muslim, she's going to be Muslim, she's going to be Muslim, she's going to be Muslim, you know what I'm saying, I said, I said, you give a dowel and then you marry her, man. You want your brother to marry you, and give you give you a child, because you know it's your child, you know what I'm saying? So even though out of wedlock, but still, you know, you, you know this is your child. Yeah, you can prove it's your child, but blood. many other men have spoken on this here, all right? All right? And uh, so, alhamdulillah, you know. And, uh, but he didn't follow the advice. You see what I'm saying? And uh, so one day he came to the, he came, he came to a community meeting, he had to baby with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm trying to hide, I'm trying to hide the brother's fault. And there's nothing on the baby, you know what I'm saying? So I told him, brother, it's not good that you do that, huh? Because that, you know, that's your child, all right? But you make people start inquiring, well, what the song do with that baby? You know, you know you call people to talk, you, you call mm -hmm. it a fitness. Mm -hmm. So if I like, keep it hidden, keep it hidden. If you want a woman ain't gonna be Muslim, let her go and leave her, you know what I'm saying? And just take care of the child. He's gonna send him move on. He said, don't bring the child in our face. <laughs> when you had that baby out of wedlock, you know what I'm saying? With a coffin. You see what I'm saying? All right? So I'm still trying to cover it, brother. I still like the brother. He was young, he made some mistakes, and he's trying to get himself together. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you gotta use some kind of you know, tact and you know. You know, you don't want to run him away. I didn't run him away. He really appreciated it. So just don't, you know, you don't give your, your, your daughter and whatnot. But you don't bring him in front of him. Hey, y'all, look, I fornicated. <laughs> oh, I mean, right. Some of the little sister, maybe some other young sister see you and she might want to be interested in your marriage. But I got to tell her, no, you can't. I got to tell her. You see what I'm saying? But when you when do that openly, you know, that causes a problem. So he, he, but he really appreciated it. I didn't run him away, man. I said, just, just. Yeah, be more discreet than that, man. It's not much. You see what I'm saying? Inshallah. Yeah. So you just, just advise the brothers and sisters, man. When they come in with ways and, you know, be patient with them. Be patient with them. You know, but, but keep, you know, don't have to stop giving them advice. You know, not, and try to encourage them to build upon their iman and their faith. So, I think uh, we'll take the last question and uh, after that. Sheikh, I got a question for you. As I told you earlier today, yeah. how do you deal with someone who's following Malachi? Malachi is New York. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
people just stop it. Like, you know, they got Malachi, he's in jail, okay? He right. was a fraud from the very beginning. Right. He was exposed many years and a lot of dollar humiliated him and put him in jail for 90, I don't know, 90 for some life. Years. Right. Yeah. Right. But for the crime that he did, he was a pedophile and all of that. All right? And so he played with the dean, so a lot of them a lot of punishment. Like, anybody follow him, they got to be a fool. Got to be a fool. Okay? And sometimes you gotta you got just tell people straight up, yeah, I've been trying to advise, I've been trying to advise you. Well, you, who you follow? You following that? You see, so, so maybe you can give, give, you know, give him some literature, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and show how, how this man has been a fraud so far and so on. He don't have no Solomon no more. Some, you know? some of those people, they have, they have a, their mind frame is that uh, that's a conspiracy by the U.S. government oh. to get rid of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's what I've heard, you know? Okay, okay. Well, like I said, man, you know, just give, give him the best advice you can. You know. Yeah. Give him the best, best advice you can. You know, and you pay the interest. Honorable the voice, man. Right. But but don't don't compromise with it. His head is in that no man. This is this is ignorance, man. This is sure. This is all the book. Because I mean, as you know, he takes a little bit from each each book, and he teaches that the uh, the Arabs don't understand the the Arabic, and he's like all prophets were black and yeah. All this fools. It's ignorance, man. It's ignorance. What it is you dealing with? It's ignorance. And all right, so you got to equip yourself to be able to respond to him. And, I mean, you know, to deal with it. Or get someone that had more knowledge than you to talk to him and let him know. Hey, man, you know, it's, it's not from his mouth. It's, uh, you know, see the thing, is, is he claiming to be a Muslim? No. Oh, no, no, no. Well, there's two. Okay. One one says he's a Muslim, one says he's a Muslim, yeah. but then, yeah. See, if he believes in that stuff, he ain't no Muslim. Yeah, exactly, That's all exactly. So, see, so, see, so if he's that kind of brother, <laughs> you give him down and argue with him. Right. Right. Uh, but if he claimed to be a Muslim and he believed he was part of the Muslim, I said, no, I mean, this, this is putting you out of this. You got to get to the church. You got to come to the class with the brothers. You learn some Aqidah, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Careful. <laughs> And I know that actually we have another uh, another engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just gonna have the quick, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, light, 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 light,